It's time for Game Week 8 predictions. Right, so I'm Oli K and I'm here with my co-host as always. It's Mark Ryman. How are you getting on this evening, Mark? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Oli. Although looking back at the, the fixtures um, I predicted last time, pretty appalling. Just as I thought I got the hang of this league, it comes back to bite you. Yes, these results come out of nowhere. You know, you think someone's going to go on a run. Um, the funniest one for me was uh, the Millwall game. I think it was Millwall Preston. And I said, ah, you know, this, this <laughs> could go with lots of goals or it could, you know, be goalless. And I, I hedged my bets on goalless and Millwall just were absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Fair play to them. Yeah, like they were. You did say, though, when you said you would predict a nil-nil, that it would guarantee, therefore, that there'd be goals. And there was. So, you know, at least you knew. Of course. Yeah, it's always <laughs> the way, isn't it? Always the yeah. way. But before we dive into our predictions, if you're watching this on our YouTube, why not like this video? It really helps the channel. And subscribe for even more championship content. Although there is no champ chat this week. I'm very sorry. We didn't get down to the pub to record it. That or our Luton show. But we always have championship content. I did a nice video about Sunderland. Sunderland fans, give that a thumbs up, please. Right. So let's dive in. Burnley versus Plymouth. I've gone for a Burnley win, a tight one. Um, I think firstly to say that Oxford did brilliantly to hold Burnley to 0-0 last game. How brilliant was that performance? And they really did limit Burnley to next to nothing as well. Um, some pop shots, out, pop shots outside the box. Uh, Plymouth obviously did brilliantly to beat Luton, um, although Luton gave them a helping hand and arguably 3-1 probably flat Luton a bit. Um, uh, could have easily been five. It wasn't for some great saves by Kaminsky in the bar. I just think at home, um, it will be a tougher ask for Wayne Rooney's side. Um, I think, yeah, he's certainly got he's got things going at home park, definitely. They found it much tougher away from home. and I think they will again. Um, so I've gone 2-1 for this one. I think, you know, Burnley aren't, aren't a sure bet yet. They really aren't. I still see, I still see them, them you know, having to fight to get into those top two places. I'm not 100% convinced um, by Scott Parker ball. I know he's done it before, um, but this one's going to be a tight win for me. So I've gone less tight because I think Burnley at Turf Moor is tough. It's, it's tough going to Turf Moor. So I've gone Burnley 3, Plymouth 1. Um, from what I saw of Plymouth in the Luton game, they do have the odds flat in them. And if Luton mm. had been more on it, if Elijah Adebayo had been more on it, they could have got punished. And you know what? If La if those chances where Plymouth play the opposition through or miscontrol a ball or fall over, if that falls to Lyle Foster, he's bagging both those chances. So I think there will, there will be goals in this. I do think Plymouth are better than people are giving them credit for. But I do think Burnley's going to be a bit too much for them. Um, but fair play Plymouth for that result against Luton because, you know, they, they do have some absolute quality in that team. Um, I think, you know, I'll be eating my words. I think they'll be safe this year. Yeah, they've done very well, haven't they? Especially to replace Finn Azaz, who's at, at, Mill, uh, Millwall, at Middlesbrough. Um and, and Sizoko looks like he could well be one of those players as well to, to come in and, and score them lots of goals. Yeah, and uh, on to Cardiff City versus Millwall. Now, I think this is one that could be goalless, but I've gone for a 3-0 uh, Millwall win. Because, oh, right. Yeah. It's a 3-0 Cardiff then. <laughs> No, no, no. Cardiff are a mess. They're an absolute mess. Um, like Omar Riz has taken over there, you know, on an interim basis. I just, it, you know, they're going down. Simple as. They look like a team bereft of ideas. Um, like their best performance probably came against Sunderland in the opening game. Like, and then you, you could see they were. They're so blunt up top, like Callum Robinson hasn't been firing for years. And he's like their 
primary outlet and then they have Aaron Ramsey who you know he's just doing it because it's his boyhood club now um it's just really painful to watch it so and Mil- Millwall like Macaulay Langstaff you know fair play to him grabbing his first goal in the previous game uh, he also got an assist before that he got a goal and assist last game and that could mm. be one of the most shrewd bits of business especially while Bradshaw's out Coburn's out like I love a lower league signing uh, I'm just delighted that he missed that chance against Luton in that game a few yeah, me. weeks back me too yeah <laughs> um, I think it would be a brave person or someone who's been recently heavily drinking to bet on Cardiff to win a game at the moment. Um, I think even Cardiff fans wouldn't bet on them to, to get a point out of most games. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, but you're right. I, I'm really pleased with Corey Langstaff as well. Obviously, he did the, he did the business for Notts County. And it's it's great when when those players can step up. Absolutely, as you know, that a number have done in the past. Yeah, Cardiff City are a mess. I've gone 2 0 Millwall. Um, but yeah, it, it could easily be more. Millwall, interestingly, are such an unpredictable side from what most people said they were going to be this season. I think all of us thought they'll keep it really tight at the back, but they won't score many goals. Uh, it'll be the odd 1 0, et cetera, but they'll be fine. They'll be about mid table, et cetera. Um, a few put them slightly higher, but they've scored lots of goals. Um, this season already they're letting a few in but they've scored lots of goals so yeah for me 2-0 but it could be more they're not behaving like a typical Neil Harris side at no, all really not. No, no not at all right on to Coventry City versus Blackburn Rovers Cov I yeah mean, I mean Cov, Cov and Luton are, are, are very similar uh, they really are, aren't they? I mean, huge expectations. A manager that that, that came into the season with everyone's backing. Um, obviously, slightly different situations. Luton have been in the Premier League, um, and Coventry haven't. But but you know, new owners at Cov recently, and, and money being put into the club, and a, a great attacking lineup. They've just not shown anything. And, and we both said that you know, we we thought that if they're going to turn it round, it would probably be. You know, doing something at Leeds, you know, going to Leeds is tough. Of course it is. Um, but they got, I mean, it was 3-0. It could have been 6. If it wasn't for their goalkeeper, it would have been 3-0 at half time easily. Um, they didn't show anything in that game at all. Um, which makes this predictor look a, a, a bit silly. I've gone for a draw. I, I think that, you know, 1-1 one, one for me. So it, it is based on the fact that they're at home to a Blackburn team who have done done really really well um they did well in their last game as well um you know i i don't think i'm gonna have be able to keep on predicting coventry to get stuff out of games if this continues i can't um but at home you never know but i've gone one one i can't i can't bring myself to say they're gonna lose but there we go it's written in the stars blackburn Mm -hmm. come into this with great form and Coventry it's all going wrong you know Mark Robbins can't buy a win at the moment they're below Luton but That's obviously the barometer now clearly <laughs> <laughs> yeah but good. you know what I've gone Coventry one Blackburn nil and I'm gonna keep ringing that Coventry bell um, I think Cov Cov are going to kickstart their season now. Like, I mean, it's not going to be like win, 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 but it's coming. It is genuinely coming. I, I believe it. Um, ben Sheik is a huge miss for them. But Mark Robbins is trying out different things. Like, sure, it didn't work last game, but, you know, he dropped Brandon Thomas Asante, he dropped Sakamoto, he dropped Haji Wright. Like, those three not starting. Okay. Um, again, yeah, and, but he's mm. trying different things. He's tried different shape, and that's all you can do when things aren't going right. You know, instead of just throwing the same dog poo at a wall and hoping like this time you throw it, it's going to turn into a custard cream. Like he's trying something a bit different every single week, and fair play to him. Like, <laughs> you know? I have a feeling I know where this is going. I know what the next fixture is coming up on your list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so on to on, then. Luton Town <laughs> versus yeah. Oxford. 
And speaking yeah. of throwing dodgeball <laughs> at, at a wall and and repeatedly throwing it at the wall and thinking, oh, this time it's going to turn into a custard cream. Mark, what are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, well, I think uh, at the most predictable segue into a Luton game ever. Yeah, well, <sighs> my thoughts are that Oxford are going to outfight us in the game unless something drastic changes. They've been brilliant at home. They haven't been as good away from home. Uh, that is my only hope that I'm clinging on to as a Luton fan, that we can get something out of the game, is that Oxford haven't been anywhere near as convincing away from home. Um, they've got a couple of key injuries as well. Um, but they've got a great manager, they've got a great work ethic. And, and just one thing on them as well, you know, how brilliantly have they done in the championship, considering that they, they somehow got into the playoffs in League One. I'm still not quite sure how they managed to do that. They, the Josh that Murphy. They get, they, Josh yeah, Murphy hitting well, form at the right time. He exactly. But, but, you know, look, look at what happened to that team. Um, it's incredible. And, and absolutely, they're still riding that wave as well. But brilliant, brilliant team ethic. I, I think Luton are going to come undone. I, I've gone for a 2-1 win to Oxford here. I, I, I think that just like with Coventry... I can't keep backing um, a team that aren't showing anything. Um, and you're right, Cov are trying to change things, but but again, um, their attacking lineup isn't firing. Luton, lots of things that we've spoken about already as Luton fans in our post match, and we will do in our Oxford preview. And I would advise Oxford fans to watch that preview because we're probably going to be talking quite a lot about how much we admire Oxford rather than. Uh, so many positives for our team. So yeah, yeah, watch watch that. Um, so yeah, I've gone for a two-one win for Oxford. I, obviously, I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I hope that this is the game that we turn it on, that the team clicks. But there's a lot of ifs in that, and I just can't see it all happening against a very hard-working team. So I've got a bit more optimistic than you. I've gone Luton one, Oxford one. Um, people have been saying and commenting on our stuff saying get behind the team simply put the team need to give us something to get behind we've had soft performances at Luton they have done nothing they're open they give the other team the, whoever the opposition they just bend over let them you know jump all over us it's it's absolutely disgraceful what's going on at the moment and you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna probably play the same formation, even though we I don't think we have three fit defenders. I, I have no idea how how Luton have an injury crisis like a defensive injury crisis seven seven games into a season, um, but that that's where we we're at. It's and tradition. It's tra <laughs> tradition. It's tradition. I love it's it. traditional. <laughs> <laughs> we it's, love um, getting centre backs injured at the start of the season or throughout the season as last season was. But yeah. yeah. I'll repeat the same thing in the uh the match preview. It's a good thing we decided not to sign Nathan and Goy because we had so many defenders. Um mm. but Oxford, wow, like they are everything that Luton wish they were right now. They are the underdog, they play like the underdog. You didn't give them enough credit for their away performances because all their away losses have been tight really have, yeah. really tight affairs they they were fantastic against burnley if they play like they did against burnley against lucent we won't even have the amount of shots because lucent don't shoot so they they will prevent us from creating anything unless there are wholesale changes in in the next 24 hours um mm -hmm. in shape philosophy the way lucent played completely um and this 1-1 one, one is incredibly optimistic. Incredibly optimistic. Um, that, that is just, you know, me with my loosen hat on, you know. That is the only reason I'm predicting 1-1. One, one. Um, but <laughs> enough of that. Yeah. QPR versus Hull City. Hull found some form and, and some goals, didn't they, in the last game? They were playing Cardiff, to be fair. Um, but yeah, looked good. Look like they're finally starting to click as well. Meanwhile, I, I don't know whether you, you, you can answer this or whether it's just my imagination. There seems to be a lot of red cards this season. I mean, QPR, another game in the last game when they lost to 
So it just seems to be far more. But maybe it's just me. Maybe it's maybe it's last season in the Premier League. There's far that maybe a bit less. But obviously QPR having a man sent off. I think it was just before half time, just knackered or anything that they were going to try and do. I think I think Blackburn were, were the better side in the first half anyway. Um, but I think that completely stifled any hope they had of really getting anything from that game. Um, so in that way, yeah, it's they, kind they of hard didn't to read threaten. Into it. They didn't threaten no. after that red card at all. <laughs> no. Um, but because Hull City have found their scoring boots, I, I've gone for a tight Hull win 2-1 away from home for this one. I think, I think they could start going on a run. They're one of those sides that I think might start, start pushing. They've got a very good side. Uh, and on paper, probably a, a better side than QPR. Um, probably not a better manager, but a better side. So, yeah, tight, tight two-one win. Yeah, I appreciate your rationale there. They do have a great team. They have a great squad, a lot of talented players. However, I think you're giving them far too much credit for the <laughs> the last two wins. It was a Stoke, a Stoke win, three-one yep. against uh, Nick, Nicholas Pella. The, the Norwich goalkeeping coach um, who looks clueless not on anymore. the sideline. Not anymore. He's a manager. Well, I know, Thank no, you very yeah, much. He's a manager. He's a full manager. He's been promoted. <laughs> yeah. um, he's taken his he, off. He looks completely clueless. He looks way out of his depth. And then they beat Cardiff. Uh, and to be honest, I could probably take over a non-league team, coach them for a week and, you know, get a point mm. from Cardiff as well. Um so I've gone, I've gone QPR 2, Hull 1. I feel QPR have been unlucky. They they have a good team and everyone's sleeping on their team. And Frey, like we're, we're going to talk about Frey a lot. Like Frey's great. He's mm-hmm. so good. Karamoko Dembele, wow. Like they, they have Excited. him permanently. I think like, so, yeah. They've got him Celtic, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. I'm pretty Wait, sure. He, he, was on, he was on the books at Celtic as like a 13 or 14 you, year yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But no, I'm pretty like, sure there's permanent. Yeah, like he's so classy. I don't understand how he's not playing, like, you know, he, he should have gone to like Germany and like broken in like in the Bundesliga or something, you know, like so many young English talents do. What a player he is. Yeah. And so I've gone to one. He's still a thing. Is height still a thing for people? Do they still like get real youngsters because they're too short? Because that man is, I mean, he is tiny. He is well, absolutely apparently tiny. They, they don't. The official line is no, they, they can't okay. uh, prejudice based on height. But the right. unofficial line is yes, they, they do have right. like limits yeah. of, and what they want. But as, as look, you know, Messi showed, Kevin Keegan yeah. showed, you know, they, they were both turned away from places for being too small. Uh, and mm. Kevin Keegan was fantastic, tremendous player for Liverpool and Newcastle and Southampton and Hamburg. Uh, and, you know, I think there's another guy I mentioned there. I think he was all right as well, wasn't he? Oh, uh, I don't know who, you, who he is. What's his name? Yeah. <laughs> like just some, someone that takes growth hormones, uh, as I understand it. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, fair enough. I, I get your rationale with Hull. I'd just say, look, you can only, I don't want to bring out all the cliches tonight, but you can only beat what's in front of you. And and look, <laughs> yeah, as Luton fans, we've not been doing that. You know, it's all very well saying you should beat teams that are, are, are fighting down there. We've not been doing it. So <laughs> fair play to Hull for, for actually putting those teams away. Yeah. Um, but fair enough. Could certainly go either way, that one. Yeah, really good. Uh, no predictions. They're impossible to, to nail on. And here's one. Sheffield United versus Swansea. And uh, I'm, I'm sure Sheffield United fans will be listening very keenly to this one because we've had a fair bit to say about them. Yeah, just a week before we play them as well, which is dangerous, I suppose. Isn't I it? know. They're going like they're, they're, they're to be clipping us, aren't they? Like all, all the <laughs> stuff we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah, they, they will. Um, but fair enough. I'm, I, I think, um, well, this isn't going to help. Uh, Swansea 1-0 I've got for this one I'm not going to underestimate Swansea anymore <laughs> uh, this is more about Swansea than it is Sheffield United I think um, Sheffield United obviously couldn't put Portsmouth away fair play to Portsmouth by the way um, for that they're still missing they still haven't got a win but they've, they've done really well against the big sides and, and managed to get draws out of a lot of those games um, we've talked about Sheffield United I don't, I don't see what's so controversial about saying that Sheffield United should be killing teams off more than they are I think that's an absolute fact. 
Um, I think even Chris Wilder would say that. So, you know, if Sheffield United fans are going to get upset about that, then you're a bit too sensitive, in my opinion. But you are, it, I have got you down for a loss at Bramwell Lane, which is probably a bit brave. But Swansea have been great. And and I think that that they they've found their style of play again, um, which went went missing um, a little bit for a while after their change their last change of manager. So yeah, I've gone for a, I've gone for a Swansea win, just one nil. Yeah, same here. I've gone Swansea one, Sheffield United nil. Uh, for a completely different rationale to you. Uh, also, a big shout out to uh, that. There's a account on Twitter who just tweets one thing it's like tweeting this picture every day is paul watson out it's like someone holding up a sheep paul watson oh, yes out. tweeting this every day until we get luton's bin cleaner out of our club well you know what you're welcome swansea fans because our bin cleaner has recruited you quite a nice team even if uh you know you, you were recruiting him based off false promises of his uh, key role in our recruitment if anything he he just changed lines on the kegs, as far as I'm aware, and showed new signings around the stadium, even though that's a very short tour. But on to Sheffield United. Yeah, I've gotten Swansea 1-0 here because, look, Sheffield United's last game, their, their goalkeeper was the man of the match against Portsmouth. Um, mm. They should be doing better. The amount of talent yeah, they have. 100%. They shouldn't be relying on Gustavo Hamer free kick to bail them out against Derby County. And what a free kick it was. But they have so much talent. O'Hare, Hamer, like Ahed ah- 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 Hodgefitch, or whatever his name is. Um, Ahmed Hodgefitch. Is that better? <laughs> they they yeah. got all, all this He's talent, like from front to back, back mm. to front. They have so much talent. And I've, I'll say it again. Chris Wilder is holding them back. Look, I know they love him. I know he's got like greasy chip butties running through his veins or sandwiches, whatever. But he's he's such a dour manager. And, you know, they got nothing up top. I mean, they got, oh, they've obviously got talent up top. But there's no cohesion in the final third. Like They're relying on like magic from Callum O'Hare and and Gustavo Hamer, like lovely, like one, two balls around the corner. Like, they should be doing so much better with the talent at their disposal. But rant over about Sheffield United. Sheffield United, mm. get involved in the comments. Why not? Um, maybe I'll do a video on you guys like I did with Sunderland. Uh, I was actually very complimentary about Sunderland. Um, I think they're going for the playoffs this year. And I ate humble pie about my um, preseason predictions, if you remember those. I think I put Sunderland way down low. You did. I didn't. But I didn't put them in the playoffs, so I put them higher we, than you. I think we'll, we'll both be wrong. You know, they're they're looking yeah. great. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that leads us on to Talking our next which. game, which is Sunderland versus Derby County. Yeah, <laughs> I nearly joked saying I've come for a Derby six 0 win. No, um, <laughs> we did say Sunderland running out of steam. Um, it's about youth players and and not energy levels. I think people took that comment literally. In mm. terms of energy, I mean, look, I thought it was obvious what we meant with that. Uh, a lack of experience in the league come back to, comes back to bite you towards the end of it. Sunderland fans, you should, you know that. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's the championship, and the best sides have got a good, a, a good mixture as well. And Sunderland will do very well and have done very well. Obviously, they'll be disappointed with their last result um, against Watford as. Uh, <coughs> A few Luton fans would have been as well, although we're a bit preoccupied with Friday. Uh, I see them winning this 2-0. Um, I think Sunderland at home are a very good team um, and the fans are right behind them. And that place when it's rocking is pretty impressive. Uh, it's a it's an absolutely massive stadium. Um, and, you know, it, it's a tough place to go for Derby. Um, yeah, so I've got them winning it relatively comfortably. I think Derby did well against Norwich, really. Um, all things considered, obviously they lost, but yeah, I think um, for me, Sunderland to, to win it 2 0. Yeah, I've got a bit tighter. I've got Sunderland 2, Derby 1. And yeah, that was a bad beat for Sunderland to lose due to a penalty as well. Like, I, I do feel for them. Um, not not just because it was Watford that they lost to. Um, 
and yeah you're right like run out of steam we don't mean it like that we don't um like i think the oldest player in their squad they have a 29 year old then they have method who's 26 um, i don't know how old luco nine is um mm. he's got a bit of peter pan about him yeah, he just doesn't seem to want to grow up like always jumping on people's backs <laughs> At least he's not biting people, I guess. <laughs> well, he did, he the did bar kiss has someone, been right? Yeah, yeah, he I did quite, kiss someone. No, but he, if he's, he's one of those players, though. If you play for you, you bloody love him, don't you? I mean, yeah, we don't like him anyway, because he's, he's played for Wickham, but yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, he's a wily player, but it's just having those, those experienced heads in the championship, I guess. He was a Watford Academy player as well, so even oh, well, more reason go. to hate him. Even yeah. more. Well, I, yeah. I did not know that, but that just adds to it. Brilliant. <laughs> it'll be look, it'll be a tight game. I, I think it will be a tight game. I think Derby County have gone a bit more wily, and I think they'll you know they'll try and set up to counter. Um, and Sunderland can be a bit shaky at the back. They can. Um, so I, I do feel Derby might get something from this game, but you know I am backing the Suns of Home win two one on two. Carlos Corbrand's West Brom versus Michael Carrick's Middlesbrough battle of the managerial heavyweights here. Yeah, and, and first thing to say is our massive condolences to the the um, the person that lost their life at, at Hillsborough on on the the game on Saturday. Awful. Um, Absolutely awful. It puts football into into perspective of those things. Um, just just such a sad set of events, and obviously, everyone's thoughts in the whole league will go out to that that fan and their families as well. Um, yeah, it was a tough game all round. I think um, for for West Brom, um, obviously, on the football inside, um, Sheffield Wednesday did did very well. I think West Brom came back in that game, didn't they, to make it 2-2. It was 2-0 at half-time. I might be wrong. And then it was uh, Sheffield Wednesday that scored the winner right at the end, two minutes afterwards, something like that. Um, I'm really finding it hard to pick and choose between these two. Middlesbrough are much stronger at home, but they've got a very good attack. West Brom um, tend to be able to grind out wins as well. However, they did you know, just concede three goals. So I I've got 1-1. Maybe that's just me sitting on the fence. Um, you know I'm so positive usually about West Brom. Um, but I also think that Middlesbrough, um, has, again, before you say and they only played Stoke, um, but I, I really do think that they're they're going to um, they're going to start to turn it on. They, they've looked very good. They've been very unlucky not to pick up more points than they have done. I think uh, so. One one for me. They've been terrible in front of goal. They are massively underperforming their xG. They should mm, they they should yeah. be putting games to bed. So yeah, they have 100%. been unlucky, but at the same time, they're completely blunt up top. I mean, mm. they're carving out the chances. It's like um, a pencil with like absolutely no lead in there. It, it's crazy, you know. Um, I've gone West Brom two, Middlesbrough one, because I think Middlesbrough will be like West Brom just have that knack of getting in behind, like getting Josh Madger a nice little cheeky tap in here, cheeky tap in there. Seven goals in seven games now, Madger yeah. magic at the moment, and. Yeah. Carlos Corbran, he will have a game plan. He will, like, I don't think Middlesbrough will have too many chances, but I think they will grab one. So I've gone tight, 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 tight. West Brom 2, Middlesbrough 1. But it'll be a good game. I think it's, it's going to be a, a very tactical game. It really will. Um, on to Bristol City versus Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Sheffield Wednesday fans aren't going to like this because I've, I've said Bristol City to win this 2-0. Um, I think uh, <laughs> even though Sheffield Wednesday won the last game, Bristol drew uh, against Swansea. Um, but I, it's it's a gut one. I'm not going to give you any real logic to this whatsoever apart from the <laughs> fact that, that, that Sheffield Wednesday haven't been consistent. They have started they have started picking up more points. They certainly deserve to be better than, than where they are. I still rate Danny Roll as as the, as the you. Um and I think that, you know, they've they've got a clear style of play and they were certainly unlucky to lose against Luton. We've we talked about that already. Um if Bristol City play to their their best that they have shown this season, they'll win the game though. So two 0 for me. To Bristol City, interesting. I've gone the other way. I've gone yeah. Sheffield Wednesday with a 2-1 away win. I was impressed with Sheffield Wednesday. You know, what a result. 
what a result they had. And uh, yeah, as you said, back to back games where they were unlucky, mm -hmm. so unlucky. And I feel Danny Roll is going to turn it around because, like, I remember for the early game weeks, we were always predicting a Danny Roll masterclass. I think this is it. <laughs> This is it. You were always predicting one. a Danny Roll masterclass. Okay, well, yeah. yeah I, I was I always think, predicting a Carlos so Corbran masterclass. Yeah, I agree with you. Oh, yeah. I agree. He is yeah. good. I mean, the, the fact that they are still in this league, considering where they were at when he took over, mm. is miraculous. So the job he did last season is incredible, and they've strengthened their squad. I agree. Um, but I've given up on logic with these predictions. I went <laughs> with logic last game week, and it didn't work out for me, so I've gone on gut. Well, I'm going for a Barry Bannon double here because he, he's just rolling back the years. I just wish he uh, shaved that barnet. It's just it's disgraceful. <laughs> I'll bring it up every time. So, yeah, Bristol City Tintin. won Sheffield Wednesday too. Yeah, it's Tintin do. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> right, mm. on to Norwich versus Leeds. Talking of unpredictable results, I've gone for Farker to go to his old side and get turned over. Norwich 2, <laughs> Leeds 1. Now, <laughs> Leeds convincingly beat Coventry at home, mm -hmm. and that may have s sort of settled some of the nerves of Leeds fans. However, Leeds are, you know, Leeds are never going to feel comfortable until they are like 20 points ahead with only a handful of games to play. You know, they, they've bottled this league. So, you know, at least a couple of times in recent history, obviously last season being one. And I think, um, yeah, the first season, it could have been the first season under Bielsa. Sorry if I'm wrong on that one, but I feel like it might have been before they went up yeah. the second time. Yeah, they bottled yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, they are not going to be comfortable and they're going to be on edge. Um, obviously, Farker going to Carrow Road and facing his old his old team. So, and Norwich have started to really turn it on in terms of their strike force as well. I think this could be a great game. I really do. I'll say that's going to be nil nil dross now, but it, I can't <laughs> see it. Can you? Both te both teams are so good going forwards. Both teams are so quick. Uh, I can't. I, I'm really looking forward to this game. I think it'll be close either way. But I've just gone for Norwich two leads one. For fun. Okay. I've got, I've got a, a tad <laughs> a tad higher. So I've gone Norwich three leads four. I Ooh, think it's nice. gonna be yeah. an absolute ding dong of a game. Yeah, I agree. There, there's there's no love loss here. Um, you know, Norwich have been hitting the back of the net. <laughs> like whether whether goal should stand or or, 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 or oh, yeah. should stand, you know, that, that is completely different. Yeah, it was out. It was miles out. Yeah, yeah. Miles we out, don't yeah. want we don't want VAR in the championship, do we? No. Well, well, no way. No it, way. VAR doesn't make it better. Trust us. Oh yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, make yeah, it of better. Course. And I feel Leeds, they're gonna be, you know, rapid at the front. I think they're going to be leaky at the back, but so are Norwich. And, you know, Leeds are going to be able to carve through Norwich. Uh, I think Leeds are just going to get the better of this game. Um, and it's going to be intense. So, yeah, big game. Seven goals scored in this one. All right, on to Preston North End versus Watford. I feel like, I feel sick. I feel a bit dirty <laughs> doing this, just so you know, before I do it. You're gonna I've gone for a Watford, Watford win. Yeah, I've gone for a yeah, Watford course, win. But yeah. no, I have to because Preston have been, you know, Preston, you've, you've forced me to do this. Um, I've not been convinced with them at all. They did, they got a, a couple of decent results. One against a very poor um, Luton side, let's be honest. We weren't too bad yeah, on that day. gave them their actually, only win of the season. Of course we did. Of course we did. <laughs> anyway, uh, they did well to against Borough as well. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, they they were well beaten as we've said already against Millwall and they've they've got very little going forwards that they, they, they don't score goals easily as well uh Watford on the other hand you know back to winning ways which was a surprise for me I, I really didn't see that one coming so fair play to them um I think they're going to edge it one nil I couldn't go any higher than that I just couldn't but so I've gone Watford. higher I've gone two nil Watford Preston Disgusting. are awful. They're a team that could <laughs> genuinely get relegated as well. They're so bad. And it sickens me that Luton Town gave Preston their only win of the season because they are that bad. The fact that Will Keane had the freedom of the box just to you know, pick his spot 
absolutely atrocious. I, I like Liam Lindsay at the back. Uh, Brad Potts, it seems the only thing he's ever done is score that absolute wonder goal. They got him confused for Erling Haaland's brother or something silly. Or that was Erling a great goal. Cousin. Cousin. Yeah, it was a great goal. But you know what? It, it's one of those where like, if, if you stick that in your highlight reel, people will think like you're a Ballon d'Or winner or something. But the reality is you're just a very average championship footballer. And, you know, I don't see anything coming from Preston. Um, so, yeah, Watford 2, Preston 0. And on to another team I don't really see much coming from. Stoke versus Portsmouth. For me, Pompey are getting their first win of the season. So, yeah, they are. Yeah, um, only tight because you know it's going to be tough. It all first wins of the season always are. So I've got one one nil Pompey, but yes, yeah, Stoke are an absolute disaster as well, aren't they? Um, we talk about Cardiff; those two are prime candidates to go down. We said this last time as well, and there's there's not much that can convince me otherwise. I guess the only thing that Stoke have got going for them, and it is a big thing compared to Cardiff, is their squad is a lot stronger on paper. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean. What is going on behind the scenes? What, what, how much influence is as Walters having on that team, on the management? You'd assume he's the reason why they've got a goalkeeping coach in charge of their side, but phew, it doesn't look good. Um, yeah, and, and Pompey, on the ha- other hand, yeah, did really, really well at home against Sheffield United, have done well throughout the season considering, um, their, their injuries and and whatnot. Um, I think the seniors done a really good job there, and I think they'll be absolutely fine this season. I think I've, I've predicted them to stay up relatively comfortably, and I don't see that changing. So, yeah, Pompey one nil win for me. Yeah, I've gone Portsmouth two Stoke one. I think it's going to be time first win of the season for Pompey. I I think they're they're decent. They look solid enough, and Stoke are an absolute dumpster fire. The only thing that I can think of. For Stoke City, is that have you, ever, have you ever seen the movie The Producers? Yeah, like the original or the remake. Um, so I think that the Coates family are just, it's like Major League, the, the baseball movie as well. For those who haven't seen The Producers, I think the Coates family have some harebrained scheme where they think they can make more money with a team that flops than a team that succeeds, but they can't make it look like... Maybe they're match-fixing. Maybe, I don't know, because they are a betting company. Um, I I don't understand it, but they can't make it look too obvious that they're trying to fix the matches. So, like, yeah, instead of just getting, like, some homeless crack addict from, you know, God knows where, let's get someone with an actual coaching qualification and instill him as the, the coach of this team um it's a goalkeeping coach why would you hire a goalkeeping coach it makes no sense and they (laughs) he looks as i said earlier he looks clueless and you're right that their squad is so much stronger than cardiff but you know i don't know why cardiff sacked errol balak i feel he probably could have turned it around he's a definitely a better manager than than pella who's taken over at stoke he is. Mm. And, and I lord knows why they got rid of Schumacher. I think you're right. It's Walters has some weird influence where he thinks he's right. It's mad. I think sometimes, it, I mean, he's director. Is he director of football? I'm assuming yeah. he is or whatever title he's got. I, I think sometimes they feel like they've got to make a stamp on it to justify their job. I always find that with directors of football. Like they, they've got to change things up, make sure that they put their own personal stamp on it regardless. Otherwise, what are they doing there? Uh, just a disclaimer, we are not accusing Stoke of match fixing. Thank you. Yeah, I don't want thank any you. legal thank emails. You. Thank you, okay. Mark. I appreciate that. No we are problem. Not, no yeah, problem. The, these are, these are my personal views. They are zany. I am not, not accusing the Coates family <laughs> of match fixing. <laughs> <laughs> like, like in the, the like in Major League, the baseball movie with I think it was Charlie Sheen. I'm not sure, or was that Hot Shots? I can't remember. I'm not accusing that the Coates family of any misdemeanors like that. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll put, thank we'll you. Put, thank we'll you. Put it underneath. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ed, 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 Kate, can you please just? Kate's like going to be a, so big, upset with you. <laughs> I just put big bold at the bottom of the video saying 
the, these views do not represent okay football. Okay, good stuff. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Right. I think that ties us off for the week. Hopefully, think no so. legal issues this week. So uh, fingers crossed. Ju- just angry people in the comments. But while well, we're talking about the comments, get your thoughts down in the comments. Get your predictions for this midweek you know game week i i don't like the midweek game weeks to be honest um but regardless if you've enjoyed this video like it it takes a second and subscribe for even more championship content and as always a big shout out to our audio partners black star amplification and carry on for making sure that we sound great and wherever you are in the country if you collect vinyl cds or guitars head on down to the record shop in amersham and Thank you all for watching and whoever you support, may the odds forever be in your favor.